Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. My special guest today is a friend of mine who truly is a fantastic guy. He is the anchor of the number one rated Sunrise Morning Show on Hawaii News Now. He is the one and only Steve Uehara, and today we are going beyond the news. Hey, Steve. Good morning. <laughs> this is weird. This is so strange. You're on the other side. Yeah, it is. You know, in, in our business, we have a, a certain level of, of control. Yeah. And we've, we've, I've just given all of the control over I'm to in you. The, I'm in control. Yeah. I'm like, where are we going? I don't know. Rusty's driving. Yeah. yeah. Steve, you yes. and I went to Damien Memorial yeah. High School. Yeah. And uh, when I was there, I'm, I was a little older than you. Not much. Uh, not much. Not much. Yeah. But it was, it's the most strict school. I mean, it was. The, the brothers, they had paddles. They did. How was it when you were there? You, uh, you know, everyone that you talk to that came from a different generation, it, they all have different experiences. So you, you've probably talked to uh, guys that went there in the 60s and 70s. And yeah. their, experience, <laughs> their experience was much different. Yeah. Right? So the, the brothers that ran the school, they were, they're boxers. And so, you know, there were, there were a number of stories, and, and I wouldn't be able to verify it, just from what we've heard, that, you know, they made examples out of some of the tougher kids in the class. Oh, yeah. All of that was completely gone by the time we were there. Yeah. But it was still, you know, it was, it was different because it would be in the middle of August and September, and we're, you know, we're the only school wearing ties, you know, and it's stifling. But uh, for everything that I think about, I would, I, would, I would never trade my experiences at Damien for anything else in the world. It, it was, me too, yeah. me too. Yeah, but that said, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel. I mean, I think the way they've moved, it, it kind of had to be done. Number yeah. one, uh, the business model wasn't working. And so, you know, it's one of those things, if we didn't do this, if we didn't go co-ed, it was going to go away. And so what, what would you prefer is that they make changes or the school just becomes obsolete. And on the other hand, I, I think, you know, for, for us, the, it was a different generation. And so when we entered college, it was just so different seeing females at school. Totally. <laughs> but, but, and, you know, for obvious reasons, number one, you, know, you have these uh, teenagers that are now suddenly immersed in class with, with female uh, co-eds. But, but at the same time, it's, it's also, even if you weren't romantically interested, it's, it's speaking on a platonic level, like re being able to relate to them and, you know, what do you mean you're not going <laughs> to hang out at the house and all day Sunday and watch football? What's wrong with you? you know? it's like, we, didn't, we didn't understand that. And so it's good that this next generation is you know, a little bit more immersed in, in that. And, and to be honest, from, from what I've heard, because I still have friends that, that are back at that school, those, the girls have come in and they, they've definitely pushed the boys. So totally. It's good for competition, too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Now, Steve, what college did you go to and what did you study in college? So I, I went to the University of Hawaii for two years. And then somewhere in the midst of that, I, I just decided, you know what? I, I would like to see what life is like on the mainland because, you know, local boy and you've never gotten off the rock. And so I went and I, I found the National Student Exchange Program and I looked up uh, and there were all these different opportunities, but I went to the Cal, uh, Cal State University of Northridge. Nice. Just to see what it was like in LA, yep. you know? And uh, so I got there and I always knew that I wanted to write. That was one thing. And so I was gonna get into, um, into news and I was gonna become a, my dream, Rusty, as silly as it sounds, was I wanted to be a comic book writer. Okay. <laughs> when I was a kid, so that wasn't happening. My dad made sure that I knew that. It was, it was very clear from, uh, at that point. But, so, and then I, I went to LA and you know, the professors there, they, they were very hands-on. And so that department, I, I kind of fell in love with broadcast news from there. So what was your first official job that you ever had in your life? So outside of broadcast yeah. news, yeah. Uh, I, I worked at Little Caesars. Really? Pizza Pizza. Wow. <laughs> in Mililani. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was cutting the, the crazy bread and, uh, you know, serving it up. Wow, so, yeah. cool. And so, uh, uh, Little Caesars, then Burger King, uh, Walmart, Blockbuster Video. Wow. Uh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a <laughs> These circuit. hands have seen some work, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, your family, Liz and your kids, yeah. tell me about them. So, Liz is now... Uh, the director of foundation communications at Hawaii Pacific Health. Great. And, you know, um, I think about her and I, I always tell her and she, you know, she's like, yeah, she, she's my hero, you know. Um, she was the first female force director here in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, she worked hard to get to that point. 
And here she is, you know, after her father died, she, she realized, okay, because the two of us were working in sports, she said, well, one of us has to have a normal life for us to start a family. Otherwise, it was never going to actually happen. And so yeah. she quit. Um, we, we had a couple of kids. And she's, and she's not only taken on a new career, but she's flourished at it. I mean, how many people can actually, you know, start from scratch and then completely rebuild and get, to yourself, get yourself to a level that, you know, that, that most people don't get to. She so, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was my boss back then. She's my boss now. <laughs> and we joked about it. You know, now she controls everything, Rusty. So now she's legitimately my boss. Yeah. Now, Steve, how did your TV career begin? So uh, this, is, this is a long story. I don't know. Would we have half an hour? Briefly, briefly. <laughs> um, so I was, I was interning while I was going to school in California. And so every time I would come back, I would talk to all the news directors. And so one of the people that I talked to at the time was Jim McCoy, who ran KHON, who was the news director. And nobody had jobs, so I went back to school. I was going to get my teaching certification. And then halfway through that, he called and he said, you know, um, we're about to launch weather. We're, we've never done weather. And so, you know, Trini was about to become, you know, the person, the star that sat next to Joe. Yeah. And so they were looking at that time, the, the, the weekend news anchor was Malia Maddock. And yeah. they were looking for a, a male weather person to sit next to her. And I, I'm like, Jim, I have no interest in this whatsoever. <laughs> He's like, no, just come on, just come over. <laughs> and uh, so I get in there and, you know, I tried to memorize some things. I did some studying. I get to the, I get to the green screen <laughs> and I completely bombed, <laughs> completely bombed. <laughs> and so uh, afterwards, it was like, okay, that, that didn't work, you know, <laughs> but, you know, would you like to come in and, and you know, just learn and, and, you know, just work your way up? And I'm like, Jim, that's exactly what I wanted. That was my opportunity. And so I started off as an assistant producer, which is basically you're running the assignment desk and you're, you're listening to scanners, making phone calls, making checks. And then I became a producer over there. Then for a brief point, I, w I was a, a news reporter. And then I, I got into the, the sports business. So I became the third man at that time. So at that time... I think it was Jai Cunningham, uh, John Veneri, and myself uh, doing sports over there. Wow. Yeah. And then what happened? Did you oh, uh, get yeah. let go? So I got, <laughs> you know the story. Yeah, you know. You yeah, got... yeah. And, and I got let go um, for budget constraints. And, and Rick, at the time, the two stations were owned by the same company. Uh, and, and Rick said, you know, look, we love you, um, but, but we can't have you on board. You know, we can't have you as part of the staff. So he let me go. And... All these things just kept going through my mind. I'm like, this is it. This is over. And, you know, every year, you know, because it's such a, a high-stress job, and yeah. there's no guarantee that yeah. you're going to get to where you want to be. And so every year I told myself, okay, I'm going to do two more years. Two more years. Okay, one more year. Let's see if it materializes what I really want it to be. And so this is the point where, okay, I, 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 didn't, I didn't end my two years yet, you know? <laughs> I'm like, am I, am I really good? My dad, you know, was working at the shipyard at the time, and he hadn't retired yet. He's like, hey, boy. You know, still get a chance, still get a chance. I can still pull you in. He's like, you let me know. And I'm like, oh, dad, I don't know. Because if I, I knew if, if I burnt the bridge then, then it was, it was pretty much over. Right? Yeah. I wasn't going to go back. And so uh, a week later, Rick ended up calling me because he was running KGMB at the time. Okay. And he's like, okay, you know, come in. I think I have an opportunity for you. And so my friends always joked that I got let go from being the three spot in sports to being promoted over at KGMB. You know, and that was when I met Liz, yeah. uh, and she became my boss, and she's been my boss ever since. <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> so, Steve, how, yes. how and when did Sunrise start? September 17th, 2007 was our wow. first episode, and uh, it's been a ride. Um, it, and at the time, it was, it was, I wouldn't say a risk. It wasn't a risk, because with Rick, you always know that it's, it's going to work, you know, and it, and I remember even having this conversation because I was going from the weekend sports person to where I'm in charge of five minutes worth of sports, seven max, yeah. to now. And he kept telling me, he's like, are you ready for this? Because now you're, <laughs> at the time, Sunrise was only two hours. That was another thing. Sunrise was only two hours, wow. an hour, four and a half hours. But yeah. he, he's like, I'm, a, I'm trusting you with a two-hour show. He's like, are you ready for this? And I, I, I remember there was one night, it was, it was Rick, Rick Blangiardi, for those of you who don't know um, our news director at the time, Chris Archer, and our news director now, Scott Humper, who at the time was our executive director. And they're like, okay, I, you know, I, I had auditioned. Um, long story about that, but anyway, so I, I, I had auditioned, and, and they were about to give it to me, and, and Rick said, okay, are you, are you ready? <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, Rick, I, and I know you don't like to hear this, but I'm like, I'm actually a little nervous. I'm, I'm not sure 
you know, because I've never done anything on this magnitude. And yeah. he looked at me. I will never put you in a situation where you can't succeed. You know, he's like, I will make sure that you can succeed. Nice. Yeah. And, you know, when you have somebody with that kind of cloud and with, with you know, that, that kind of backing that makes sure that you know that, you know, whatever it takes, he's going to make sure that you have your resources and have your opportunity. I mean, you know, where else can you go? I'm like, all right, let's sign up. Let's do this. Wow. Yeah. So Sunrise has been the number one rated show for all of yeah. these years. Why, why is Sunrise so successful? Uh, that, that's a good question. It's a number of personalities. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with, with anything that our station does, it's, it's always about challenging. You know, Rick always has these meetings and he talks about, you know, okay, that was great. Now what's next? Yeah. Now what's next? You know, and it's always, and it's the same thing with everybody else that we have, whether it's Scott or Ryan Wilson, uh, who is our ex executive producer now. It's okay, well, that was, that was excellent. You know, and he makes sure to give praise to every single person that, you know, obviously, whether it's from uh, Grace and Howard and everybody else and, uh, and Guy and, and Lacey and, and Mileka, you know, make sure that everybody has been mentioned and Billy, um, but then he's like, okay, now we're challenging you to this next step and to, you know, 2019 is going to be even better. 2020 is going to be better than that. And then 2021 is going to be, you know, out of, <laughs> out of the park, you know? And so it, I guess that's what it is. It's, it's kind of always looking to what we can do to improve. Um, and a, a big part of that is, is taking us out of our, our, our comfort zones. We do a lot of, and we, we just showed a, a couple of pictures of some of the things we do on the road. Yeah. where we go, we immerse ourselves in a different place that we don't normally, like, you know, we're not always in a studio. And we go, whether we're going to a, a neighbor island or if it's Hilo for Merry Monarch or uh, Hawaii Island, or, or we, we immerse ourselves within the community. We talk to people and make sure we understand what, you know, what affects them. And we do stories based off of that. Uh, so, I get it. Yeah, yeah it's it all about sense. challenging. And, you know, as a coach yourself, it's, it's about making sure we're not complacent. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, Steve, you and Grace Lee, okay, you yeah. guys have such a great partnership together. You guys have great camaraderie. Yeah. How, how is it working with Grace? You know what's funny? And this dates back to when, when we were all buddies, yeah, right? Yeah. When we were going out. Um, uh, Grace and I were friends before, yeah. from back in the early 2000s. And she's, she's great friends with Liz. So what this actually started, now, now that I think about it, was... When Grace, so I was the last one to get hired. So they, they knew they were going to bring in Howard. Uh, Grace was already hired. Uh, Ramsey was the, the reporter at the time. Billy was doing things with the radio, but he was going to be with us in partnership. And Jeff Booth oh, yeah. uh, was our meteorologist. And, um, and so I, when I auditioned, and then I, 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 w I was still doing sports. And so the, when Grace got hired, she came back and they were like, okay, let's do some practice runs. So when... At the time, I think it was Stacy Lowe was our weekend anchor. And you know, when Stacy was off, then Grace anchored. And it just so happened that Jeff was the meteorologist on the weekends, and I was the weekend sports guy. <laughs> and so they saw that, you know, and they're like, wow, this works. Yeah. There, there's an actual rapport there, and they feel comfortable, and they can showcase their personality. Totally. And, you know, it's over the course of 12 years, you know, it's it's – been a grind and Grace, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's not. You know, every day is is different, and you know, just like any brother brother sister relationship, there's days when I'm sure she doesn't want to be around me, you know, <laughs> and vice versa. But you know, we make it work because there's a mutual respect and there's a mutual love. Yeah, Grace is absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Now, you know, you interviewed so many people on your show, and one of the highlights for you is yeah. to interview someone like a coach Lou Holtz. Oh yeah. Now, when you're interviewing someone like Lou Holtz, what are some things that you ask him and what is, what are some things that you want to know i like stories yeah yeah and i i, I think that's the best thing because you can always like okay what was it like you know you have this many wins or you're you know uh this many championships or you know getting that kind of perspective but if you can get someone like that who has so many war stories about the different players and all, all, all Americans and being on a stage. I remember him. I, I, I remember before that, I had actually sat down and, and he had given a presentation for the Notre Dame alumni. Oh, yeah. And, oh, man, he rattled off everything <laughs> about, you know, that Sinners versus Saints with the, the yeah, Miami Hurricanes. Yeah. And, you know, oh, man, he went off and, he, you know, and he's still, he's so sharp and he's remembering all his players. I mean, he remembered uh, Sean's brother, Jason, oh, who wow. played with, you know, at Notre Dame, you know, under him. And, you know, that's the, 
when when you get someone like that, I mean, you don't want to talk about perspective or you. I mean, it's it's good to an extent, but when you just get them rattling off story after story, I mean, that's what you want. That's the that's the great. Story, yeah. No, know? I get it. And yeah. he's so he's so inspirational. Yeah. Steve, we're gonna take a quick break, okay. and when we come back, we're gonna continue going beyond the news. Excellent. All right. It's been good so far. <laughs> you are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Steve Uehara. We will be back in 60 seconds. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the very successful anchor of the number one rated Sunrise Morning Show on Hawaii News Now. He is Steve Uehara, and today we are going beyond the news. Steve, yes. you had the privilege of flying with the Blue Angels. <laughs> How was that experience? Uh, it, was, it was exhilarating, it was humbling, it was nauseating all <laughs> at the same time. And I mean, physically nauseating. Um, it, but, you know, it, it's also humbling because when you talk to all these other military personnel who are there gathered as, you know, because to them it's just a thrill to watch. Yeah. And I remember talking to one of them and I said, I would love to have this experience. And I'm just thinking, wow, you know, here I am, some schmuck from the media, <laughs> and I get to ride on a Blue Angel. And, you know, somebody who's serving his country, you know, I wish there was a way to, a way to pay it forward and make sure. But, you know, it, it was an honor. Absolutely. It's also work. Yeah. I mean, like they go over. The right, breathing. The, the, yeah, the breathing. they go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you done it? No. Oh, right. yeah. So they, they make sure. So there's there's these exercises, and and they, and it's very audible. So they um, tighten your your core and shove your <laughs> your feet into the floor of the plane. And they're like, <laughs> you know, whenever they make those giant turns, and it looks terrible, by the way. Yeah. Uh, whenever you see those pictures, but I mean, it was it was exhausting because by the end, I had a, I had a complete workout. But Steve, you yeah. know, we, we put a picture yeah. on, on the show already, yes. but it doesn't really do it justice. So oh, no. I want to play a video clip. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah! <laughs> what do you even practice that? <laughs> that was awesome. At home. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, oh that's good stuff. <laughs> Departure Blendle 7 passing at 3,000 per second. Here we go. Now we'll do some victory rolls to see where the bomb went. <laughs> now we don't do this in combat, but this is just something fun to do for all of our friends. Oh, there you go. There's some papers. <laughs> Well, I guess I didn't have to demonstrate. <laughs> Steve, I can watch that yeah. clip uh, all day. Uh, I can watch it all day. It was fun. You know, but you know, the, the most humbling part about that too is that that pilot. CJ, I think his name was CJ Simonson, the captain CJ Simonson. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 one of four people that he's taking on a ride. Wow. So, and and by the time I'm the, I'm a complete mess. My <laughs> stomach, you know, I'm just like coming out and I, I actually I needed a baggie, you know, and he, he gets out and he's like, Are you are you all right? You you okay? All right, I'm gonna go use the bathroom and I'll be back for the next guy. You know, like it, it's nothing for him. You know, these guys are elite athletes, yeah. you know. Well, what a what a fantastic experience, oh, yeah. though, Steve. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Steve, you know, for for me, I was so happy to be on your Sunrise Show over a year ago when my book first came out, okay. and I loved the interview yeah. with us together. Yeah. Um, tell me about what you like about my book, Beyond the Lines. You know, well, first of all, I think it was such. I you, you talk about who you like to have, and it's always a 
it's always a neat experience when you get to, like, get, you're like, oh my God, my friend Rusty's coming <laughs> to the show, you know? Um, but you, and we've had these conversations before, and you, you always talk about, in the sports realm especially, you know, you talk about elite athletes. And they're like, well, this guy did it, and he did it by himself. And you, you realize, no, that, that's never the case. That's never the case. No matter how great the athlete is, no matter how talented the person is in whatever field, it starts with leadership and it starts at the top. I mean, we, we talk about Rick Langiardi. I mean, that's a huge reason as to why our station has done so well because we have somebody that, you know, number one, everybody buys in because we look and there's obviously a leader, you know, and then number two, he, he has, you know, that kind of knowledge and, and that kind of vision that can take a team you know, whether it's, it's our team or a football team like he did back in the day, and, yeah. and he can take them to where they need to be, you know, and to succeed on whatever level. So speaking of Rick Blangiardi, yeah. I mean, he's a he's an amazing leader. Yeah. What else about Rick makes him a great leader? Okay. So I like to answer in stories because okay. I also like, I like it. <laughs> okay. so, so when he let me go from one station, and then a week later, he hired me back in the next station, and he sat me down. And, you know, I, as the, the third guy in sports, I not had that much, you know, interaction with him as much as I had, like, the utmost respect. But I'm sitting down in his, his office, and he's right there, and I'm right here, and he's like, you know, Uihara, you know, <laughs> always the coach, right? He's like, Uihara, at the end of the day, you can take this now, and you can go into your new sports office, and you'll be like, yeah, I'm the weekend sports anchor for KGMB, you know? But he's like, or, and then he leans into me. And his eyes locked in. Or you can stand up right now, kick my door down, and really take a hold of this opportunity. You know? And then, then even more, so he's like, I don't think I have to tell you what I want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, I, and if you know Rick, it was obviously a lot more lively. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was just stunned because I, I was like, okay, this, you really want me to stand up? Like, <laughs> am, I, am, I supposed to, am I supposed to kick his door? Is that what I'm supposed to do? But, you know, it, it's... It's that, like we, we always talk about, it's the, the next step in the process. It's like, okay, yeah, you, you got here, but is this where you want to be? Yeah, you know, because yeah. you could be better, you know? And it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's complimentary, but it's also challenging and taking you to that next level. You know, in terms of character, I mean, obviously he's a man of great character, yeah. and so are you. In the book, I talk about that my first priority was to develop champion athletes of character first, and then yeah. great tennis players second. How important is character on your Sunrise team? Oh, you know, I, I think it's everything. Because in, in a lot of other shows, and in, in a, a lot of other formats, I think you can get away with not having great character, you know, um, because you don't rely on each other so much. Yeah. I mean, we, we got a four and a half hour show every yeah. single day. You know, and there's a lot of, you know, I mean, we don't always agree, but, you know, we'll, we'll argue. We'll make sure that our, our opinions are heard and, you know, because it matters to us, right? We live here, you know, this, these are our, our aunties and uncles and our moms and our dads and our friends and family, you know, we care so much about everything that's going on within our community. And, you know, we, we want to uh, at least attack it the right way. You know, there's no right or wrong in how you do things so, so much, I think, as you've thought it through, you've talked to the people that are out there, and you do it with respect to other people, yeah. you know, and that's huge. Yeah. You know, I always look at, at Howard Dykus and I used to joke with him. I'm like, you know, he always jokes about being the Malahini and he's like, I gotta wear a Aloha shirt because <laughs> this is what I, you know, because I, I want to fit in. I'm like, Howard, you know Hawaii as well as any local guy out there, you know? It's like you, and you don't just know places, you don't just know um, landmarks or any, you know, trivia. It's like, you know people, Yeah. you know? And I think that's what we have on our show. We have people that actually legitimately care about each other, but also just about Hawaii because this is this is where we live, and it comes across like that as yeah, well. I, I hope so, Rusty. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Steve, I want to ask you: Have you ever had like a major adversity in your life? Uh, I mean, I, I think we, we all have, you know. And I guess the main adversity, like, uh, is always death. A, a couple of years ago, I, I lost a, a good buddy of mine, um, Eddie Gose, and uh, it was. It was rattling and it was eye-opening because he's my age, yeah. you know, 40, 40 years old, 41, I think he was at the time. He had pancreatic cancer. How wow. does that happen? But he was, a, he was a fighter. He was a fighter. He made it, he made it 
two years, you know, most people don't go to. And, you know, the, the thing about Eddie was he was always, he was always smiling and he was always joking. Um, and I always joke because uh, my, my kids love Imagine Dragons. And so for, for me, it, it, he, Eddie, he did this joke once and he's, he's like, hey, Steve, uh, I want to be the weather guy on your show. And I was like, why? He goes, because I, I know all about lightning and thunder. <laughs> you know? and, and so whenever Imagine Dragons, he, that song comes on, I always think about him, you know, like, Thunder, yeah. <laughs> thunder, lightning and the thunder. And yeah. I'm like, this is Eddie's song. And my kids always sing it to the, so this is Uncle Eddie's song. And I'm like, yeah, it's Eddie's song, man. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, Steve, you know, you're, you're obviously very successful and your Sunrise program is hugely successful. How do you define success? Oh, wow. That's a loaded question, Rusty. I, yeah. I, I think, and, you know, my wife and I have, I've gone over, you know, what, what do we consider this, right? What, what do we want to make a lot more money? You know, do we want to take trips? Do we want to do that? And, you know, it's, and, and I know, you know, this, the new millennial thing, they talk about life balance, yeah. you know, but it's true to an extent, right? You've got to work hard. Yeah. That's the thing is like, it's not cheap living here, no, right? No. By any means, a stretch of the imagination, but we got to, you know, we, we all got to work hard, but you also have to find that balance. You know, what are you willing, because anybody can make more money if they want to, you know, yeah. but, but okay, well, how much do I really want to dive into that, you know, and how successful um, on the monetary level or, you know, with your job, I mean, I, mean, I, I guess it's, 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 it varies person to person, you know, but I mean, I, I, I will tell you this, though, the Sunrise crew and myself included, you know, we take this job very seriously, like you already mentioned, Yeah. you know, because, you know, you, you need people that are going to be out there in the community and addressing the issues that need to be addressed. Got it. Yeah. Steve, before we wrap, I want to ask you one more question. Yeah. What gives you fulfillment? I, and I guess that jumps off that same answer there and, you know, family, you, you know, uh, and, that's the beauty of my job. That's the one thing people always ask. What time do you have to wake up? I'm like, I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, oh. <laughs> which is pretty ridiculous. But, but I get off usually around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and then I get to go home. I'll, I'll usually take a nap, and then I'll pick up my children, who are 7 and 8, Jason and Kayla. If you're, you're probably not watching. You're, you're at summer school. <laughs> <laughs> you better not be watching. Um, but uh, th then I pick them up. I get to go over homework with them, and then I, I get to take them to, you know, Basketball practice, soccer practice, swim class, you know, and that's, that's my zen, you know. I get to jump in with my kids and just kind of, you know, ride that ride. And then Liz comes home at night and everything's complete. So, I love it. Yeah. Steve, I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show yeah. today. You know, I mean, sharing <laughs> Did all that work? Yeah, Did that that's work? awesome. Sharing your insights. Yeah. A lot of people know who you are. But, but we they weren't were... rolling, right? We were, that, was just, <laughs> that was a practice. Right? <laughs> but you're, you are a fantastic guy. I mean, uh, you're very real, you know, on the show and yeah. off the show. I mean, pe and pe what people, when they're watching you, yeah. what they see is what, what they get. Uh, thanks, Rusty. Thank you, Steve. That was fun. That was fun. Thank you. <laughs> Go do it again in 10 years or so. Yeah. <laughs> And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Steve and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.